Today's video is about the circle of Willis and blood supply to the brain. The blood supply to the brain is usually divided into anterior and posterior circulations. There are two main pairs of arteries, the internal carotid arteries and the vertebral arteries. Internal carotids form the anterior circulation. The vertebral arteries and basilar artery form the posterior circulation. The anterior and posterior circulations within the brain are interconnected via posterior communicating arteries, which make the direct connections between anterior and posterior circulations. And there is an anterior communicating artery, which creates anastomosis between two anterior cerebral arteries, making a complete ring, which is known as the circle of Willis. By definition, circle of Willis, or cow for short, is a ring of arteries at the base of the skull. It is important to note that many stroke patients Patients with intracranial aneurysms and patients with intracranial tumors need to have Circle of Willis evaluated with the help of diagnostic modalities such as DSA, MRA, or CT angiography. Therefore, it always helps to have a good understanding of the Circle of Willis. Let's start from the aorta, which supplies oxygenated blood to the whole body. In the sketch, you can see the aortic valve, which is located between the left ventricle of the heart and the root of the aorta. Coronary arteries that arise from the root of the aorta are not shown in the sketch. You can see ascending aorta, arch of aorta, and descending aorta. Three branches arise from the aortic arch. Brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery. These branches supply blood to the upper body, arms, head, and neck. The brachiocephalic artery divides further into the right common carotid and right subclavian arteries. The right vertebral artery arises from the right subclavian artery. Left common carotid arises directly from the arch, and then there is left subclavian artery on the far left of the arch. The left vertebral artery arises from the left subclavian artery. Both common carotid arteries divide further into external and internal carotid arteries at the level of the third cervical vertebra approximately. The external carotid arteries supply blood to the face and neck, while both internal carotid arteries course upward through the neck and enter the skull through the carotid canals on each side. Each vertebral artery courses superiorly as well, entering the transverse foramen of each cervical vertebra usually with the exception of the seventh cervical vertebra, as shown in this beautiful 3D reconstructed CT angiography image. Both vertebral arteries merge soon after entering the skull to form a single artery, which is known as the basilar artery. This is often referred to as the vertebro-basilar vascular system. The vertebral arteries supply blood to the upper spinal cord, brainstem, cerebellum, and posterior part of the brain. The basilar artery bifurcates into two posterior cerebral arteries that contribute to the circle of Willis. The internal carotid artery on each side divides into anterior and middle cerebral arteries before giving off many smaller branches. Both anterior cerebral arteries are anastomosed with the help of a single anterior communicating artery to contribute to the circle of Willis. The posterior communicating artery arises from the posterior side of each internal carotid artery just before the bifurcation and joins the posterior cerebral artery on the same side, also creating a natural anastomosis. This creates the interconnected ring of arteries, the circle of Willis. Circle of Willis surrounds the optic chiasm and pituitary stalk. Hope it is easy to see how the circle of Willis connects anterior and posterior circulations of the brain. It is very important to note that the circle of Willis shows significant anatomical variations. It is believed to provide an alternative route for the blood flow in the event of an obstruction, hence providing a compensatory mechanism to ensure vital blood supply to the most oxygen-hungry organ in the body, the brain. However, there is a disagreement among researchers on the efficacy of the structure, as communicating arteries are too small for effective blood flow from one side to another, and the circle of Willis is incomplete in 50% of the population. 
Some believe it serves as a passive pressure dissipating system. Thomas Willis described this arterial ring for the first time, hence it is named after him. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you in the next lesson.